I see we have some folks joining our session. Um, welcome. Thank you all for joining us. If you're in Florida on this rainy afternoon, um, we'll give everyone a, a minute to, to get logged in and, and get set up. If you can grab one, it might be helpful to have like a sheet of paper and a pencil or pen handy. We're, there's no homework to turn in. This is just to jot down some notes on while we're chatting. If you don't, it's okay. This is a good number. So we have about the number of students that you'll have in your first year seminar class this fall, in case you're curious. Okay, so I know we may have some folks join us, um, but we'll go ahead and, and get started. I'm Jill Dawson. I'm the Senior Director for uh, Flagler Center for Advising and Core Experience, which you will probably hear referred to as CASE, rhymes with FACE. Um, we serve as the primary academic advisors for students in the first year. Um, we uh, oversee the first year seminar course. I like to say we're a one-stop shop. So not just in your first year, but as long as you're at Flagler, if you ever have a question or need help and you're not sure where to go to, you can always come see us. Um, our offices are no judgment zone. We have candy, we have coffee, we have support, we have whatever you need. Um, and if we don't have the answer that you need, we'll help you find uh, the answer where it is. Um, a couple of housekeeping things just to, to help you navigate uh, our webinar today. So if you have a question that you would like to ask privately, so only uh, we will see it, you can use the Q&A function down at the bottom of the screen. Um, you can ask a question anytime there. We'll try to answer as many questions as you have. Feel free to send them there anytime um, and we'll pause and get to them. If we don't get to all of the questions, um, we'll definitely try to follow up with you and, and get you an answer. So feel free to, to put your questions there. Um, if you have a question that you maybe wanna to pose to the whole group, if you want to say hi, if you want to um, wave at us, um, or to participate, because there will be some parts of, uh, of the next hour where we'll ask you to um, respond in the chat, easy questions, um, you can put those in the chat. And I'll remind you all of what to do when we get there. Um, let's see if there's anything else. We're going to talk about the common read today. Um, that will be in your mailboxes soon, so check your mail. Uh, I mean, we're planning to mail those out in the next few days and you know, they'll be there soon. If you are living um, outside of the United States, you'll get an ebook that we will send you via email and then you'll get a hard copy when you get to campus. And last but not least, if you have questions after this or you just wanna reach out to someone, you can email case, C-A-C-E, at flagler.edu. That's kind of all the housekeeping I have. So I'm gonna let our two FYS faculty panelists today, um, sounds like a game show, uh, introduce mm -hmm. themselves um, and I'll kind of get everything set up on the back end. Um, so Dr. Kaufman, why don't you tell us about sure. yourself? So I'm Dr. Brenda Kaufman. I am an associate professor of political science and the director of the International Studies Program. Um, so if you end up having any questions about things like study abroad, um, I can certainly address some of those. So welcome everyone. And I'm Dr. Thweet. I actually work in the case office with Jill um, and serve as the academic advisor for the incoming um, students in the School of Humanities and Natural Sciences. So your political science or your psychology or your coastal environmental science or Spanish or international studies for that matter, um, I'm your advisor. Um, so you've probably seen my name show up in your email inbox. Um, but I also teach um, first year seminar and philosophy and religion um, on occasion. We all wear a lot of hats around here. So. Um, okay, so I'm going to share my screen. We're going to have some PowerPoint slides. We're going to mix it up with some other things along the way. Um, and I am going to turn it over to, first let me get my screen up here, to Dr. Thweet. So, um, one of the questions that we hear a lot as case advisors from both um, incoming students and parents. Jill, I think this is not the first oh. slide. This is slide number. Okay, there, there we go. go. One of the questions we get a lot is, um, what is first year seminar? And um, the basic answer to that is, well, it's a course. It's a course like any other course. 
It's worth three credit hours. You do get, get a grade. Um, you'll have a professor, you'll have assignments, you'll have textbooks. Um, every first year student um, coming into Flagler College takes first year seminar. It's a core general education requirement, um, so on and so forth. But that doesn't really tell you the, the answer to the real question you're asking, which is not what is it? It's you're really asking, what am I going to do? And what is this thing about? Um, and so we want to tell you about it um, and, and try to answer that question for you. So on this first slide is um, the very beginning of the formal course description um, that you would find on your first year seminar syllabus. Um, and in fact, you'll find a formal course description on the syllabus of every class that you take in college. So every class will have the answer to what is this class about right there in the syllabus for you and you can read it. Um, but we wanna actually sort of read this with you and talk you through it a little bit, not just throw some words at you and say, here, here you go, here's your answer. So we're actually just gonna kind of read through the course description bit by bit and chat through it. So this is what you'll find on your syllabus. And as you can see, um, first year seminar is a class about college and the world and the relationship between them. Um, and that's all true, but I wanna add some things to that. It's um, also about two other very specific things. And the first of those is um, sure, first year seminar is a class about college, but it's not a class about just any college or just college generically. It's of course about Flagler College because that is the college you are coming to. Um, you're not going to just anywhere, you're coming here. Um, and you're not just anyone and neither are we. Um, we're specific people and so first year seminar is about you and about Flagler. Um, so that's the second thing. Um, first year seminar is about Flagler College but it's also about you as a student and what it is that you want to do, um, not just here at Flagler, but what you want to do beyond Flagler. Um, why are you coming here? And what do you hope to gain here that you wanna take back out into the world with you eight semesters from now when you graduate and you go out into the world? Um, so it's about college and the world. Um, it's about Flagler, it's about you. It's about all those things. Um, so the second, sentence here is that first year seminar will introduce you to the skills and practical knowledge that you will need for success in college. And there's a lot um, packed into that sentence. So one thing that first year seminar will do is function as a little bit of a beginner's guide to college and specifically sort of college academic culture. So inevitably when you first arrive in college, um, it just feels like everybody already knows all this stuff that you yourself don't know. Um, the language is different. The lingo is different. We throw around terms like gen ed and syllabus, and you may not have heard those terms before, and you may feel a little lost, but you also feel like you don't get to ask those questions because then you sound like you don't know what you're doing and you're afraid to sound like you don't know what you're doing. But first year seminar takes for granted that you don't know everything already yet. That's the point of it. So that's a place where you do actually get to ask the questions that you might be afraid to ask elsewhere. Like, what do I call my professor? Like, <laughs> Is, is professor good enough or do we have to call everyone doctor so-and-so and what's the difference? Um, we don't expect you to know that stuff yet. Um, and you do get to ask that in first year seminar. Um, what's a syllabus? Can I go to the bathroom in the middle of class if I need to? Do I have to raise my hand and ask permission or can I just get up and go? You don't know that yet. You haven't been here yet. Um, how do I know when Thanksgiving break is and how do I find that out? What does TR mean on my course schedule? Um, T is Tuesday and R is Thursday. So if you have a course that says TR, please attend class both Tuesday and Thursday and not just on Thursdays only because then you're missing half of your class. Believe me, this happens to somebody every semester. We see it every semester. Um, so you need a place where you can ask that stuff and first year seminar is designed to be that place for you. 
Learning academic culture is one piece of this. Um, the skills and practical knowledge you need for success in college kind of goes beyond that because you're involved as a student coming to a new place for the very first time, not just in a kind of academic transition, but you just moved. You just live with a total stranger probably. You're, you're navigating um, a social transition, an economic transition, a geographical transition maybe, all of that stuff matters and all of that stuff is stressful. Um, so first year seminar is also a place to kind of bring that stuff, even though it's not academic, um, it's real and it does affect you and it does affect your success in that first semester of college. We know that, we've seen it. Um, we know that you're, you're navigating real stressors. So, we want to take all of that into account and first year seminar is one place that we do that here at Flagler. So one practical goal here is that FYS will function as a kind of extended orientation. Um, we're throwing a lot of information at you um, in this session, uh, maybe on a campus tour, maybe if you came and, and walked around and did um, any orientation in person. We've told you all these things, but we did it in the space of a few hours and it went in here and it went right back out. And that's okay because we have first year seminar where we're gonna come back and revisit this stuff. So we're gonna remind you, there's such a thing as a learning resource center. Here's where it's located. Here's how you make an appointment. We're gonna remind you that we have a career development center. We're gonna remind you that, um, the case office can help you make a four-year plan and keep you on track to graduate in eight semesters before your financial aid runs out. We're going to we're going to remind you of those things at strategic points during the semester right when you need to know them. Um, so first year seminar is going to do all of that stuff. So we're going to do um, a, an easy activity um, to get you thinking about your fall, thinking ahead. Um, but this is also an example of something that we would do in class. This is not graded, um, but this is where you can break out that pen or pencil. Um, if you've got your phone handy or your computer handy and you have a calendar function, you, you can pull that up, a Word document. Um, but what I want you to do is take a minute and we'll, we'll pause. I don't have any like fun Jeopardy music and kind of write out what you think a week in the life uh, at Flagler this fall will look like. So if you have your class schedule done or handy, put your, your classes that you'll take each week on the schedule. If you don't have your schedule or you haven't registered yet or your advisor hasn't done your schedule, just pretend. Um, classes at Flagler are generally gonna be either Monday, Wednesday, Friday for 50 minutes. So like 9 a.m. to 9.50 a.m. or Tuesday, Thursday for 75 minutes. So 8 a.m. to 9.15 a.m., 9.30 to 10.45. So let's take a minute and just Kind of map those out on uh, a weekly schedule draft. Okay, so hopefully you've got your classes on there or some of your classes or what you think your classes might look like. Now I want you to look at um, all of the empty space on your schedule. Um, so look at all that empty time and I want you to fill everything else in. What else do you think that you'll do each week? Here's the participation 
function. It's okay if you haven't filled in however many hours there are in a week. Um, I want you to answer some of the prompts we're going to give you in the chat box. Um, so just doesn't have to be formal. We're not judging grammar here. Just whatever comes to mind. Um, so what are some things that you have on your schedule? So let me just list some things off that, that you added. I have to add one myself because I'm sitting here looking at my gummy bears. Thanks, Ray. So calculus, writing lab, psychology, so you've got your classes on your schedule. What about some non-class things that are on your schedule? Working out. Okay, study time, homework, we're going to come back to that. Um, joining a club, getting a job, it's great. Going to the gym, going to the gym after morning classes. So that's like lots of things that um, are sometimes hard to do. Job, extra studying, okay. Naps, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, how many hours a week do you have on your schedule or do you think you would need on your schedule or out of class, homework, class prep, academic stuff. Fifty hours, okay. So Ray's kicked us off at fifty hours. You want to go higher or lower? Twenty hours, okay. You're not sure, think about how many, how much you, you, you did in the spring or in the fall. 24 hours, okay. Very young. Jesse, do not do all 24 hours in a day. Can't do that. So Dr. Sweet, Dr. Kaufman, I mean, what's a good rule of thumb? I mean, how how many, how much time should students anticipate spending each week? Not in class, but but preparing for class, doing homework, assignments, studying. Um, the the rule of thumb that I've always heard is something between for something like for every hour you spend in class, plan an hour of outside class prep time. Um, so I think that's a good sort of generic starting point to just be thinking in terms of like, okay, I'm in 15 credit hours for a full time schedule. That's 15 hours with my butt in a chair in a classroom, essentially. So I'm going to be spending, you know, at, at least that um, outside that classroom doing work so that I'm prepared when I come in and sit down. Um, but I think that might be lowballing it a bit. Um, that's that's just my suspicion. I'm I'm open to correction. No, I think that's a pretty good um, you know way to think about it. Um, your classes don't end when you walk out the door, right? It's really, really important that you remember um, that you're going to have many hours and you know, many pages to read, um, some writing, some assignments. And so you don't want to think of your classes as only being during those time slots, which is why it's going to be important that you add additional time to each day to dedicate to each of those classes. And just a final thought, one, you will get faster at some of these things. So if they're, you know, reading for class, preparing for class, um, you, you'll get into good habits, you'll, you'll kind of get into a groove and you will start out taking you longer and then you'll, you'll figure some things out. Um, it, there will be some weeks when the workload will be lighter and some when it will be very heavy. Um, so just know that, you know, these are averages. What about sleep? I mean, this is, how many hours are you sleeping a night? What, you know, kind of what time are you going to bed? What time are you waking up?
I'll just throw in there that I really, really, really wish um, students did a better job sleeping. <laughs> I really do. Um, not just not just the students in my classroom, but you know, I see advisees come in and they're just they're exhausted and and I wish, you know, I understand the temptation to get the most out of those uninterrupted late nights and and I understand the academic culture of all nighters and I understand the um, that sometimes the only way to break through that procrastination issue is the desperation of a deadline looming over you like I get it um, but it takes such a toll and you don't realize it um, but it's cumulative and all of a sudden you're really having a hard time making it to that eight o'clock or nine o'clock class it doesn't have to be that way um, but I think it's a real challenge um, just that all of a sudden you're the only person in charge of when you go to sleep and when you wake up. And that can be really a big deal um, that first semester, figuring out how to regulate that for yourself. Yeah, I, I would say this is a good conversation to have with your roommates during that you know, first couple of days. Um, the sleep environment you know, and, and the sleep schedules and just make sure that at least your roommate understands what your needs are and that you try to understand and respect what their needs are. And yes, I can't stress enough also how important sleep is. So before we move on and leave this behind, I wanna leave you with um, maybe a question to think about now until you get to campus, because this is going to, to be something very important um, in, in, and to plan for and, and to think about and talk about what motivates you to get things done? What motivates you to get up in the morning and go to school? Um, what motivated you to, to, to get your homework done or get your assignments done? Um, you know, was it mom or dad? Was it teachers? Did you have a friend group that was really supportive and, and you studied together? Um, I know some uh, athletes, they really, um, that, that's a motivating factor that gives them structure. What about those, those kinds of things will change when you get to Flagler? for better or for worse? And, and how do you adapt to those? Um, the, the freedom coupled with the new responsibilities and workload are big challenges. Um, and you know, it, it takes a while to get into that groove. So be thinking about those things now. Next slide up here. All right, Dr. Kaufman. Okay, great. Um, so just to talk a little bit more about what the first year seminar will do in addition to providing a space for you to really start getting used to these, the new schedule, the new motivating factors or, or missing motivating factors um, and just an overall well-being, right? Making sure you're taking care of yourself. Um, it is a, um, it, it, you know, it's an academic course as Dr. Thwaite said, you will be graded on this and there will be plenty of reading and writing assignments to do. And the idea behind this course is to really take the opportunity to introduce all of the Flagler students to the Flagler College core values. And you can see those core values here on this slide in italics. Um, the uh, transformative learning, for example, it's really this idea of how we use information, right? How we process it. And then what do we do about this new information? How does it transform um, our behaviors, our attitudes, our worldviews? And there'll be a variety of courses that you'll take throughout your time here at Flagler College that will be aimed at really um, promoting and provoking on this kind of thinking. I, I think of study abroad as just one example, but there'll be a lot of examples that you'll be able to engage in. So you'll be introduced to this idea in your FYS class. Thoughtful stewardship is another very important one. This is important um, to our college for sure, because we are stewards of some historic uh, landmarks <laughs> or our building. For those of you who have or have not yet been to campus, you will um, see that we have a lot of beautiful old buildings to take care of, but it's also about how we can be good stewards for other things. 
um, good stewards for our communities, for our children, for our planet. Someone in one of our sessions earlier suggested that we needed to be good stewards for education. And I, I thought that was a really good example. Citizenship with integrity, this is another very important one. Um, not only will we be introduced to different ideas about what it means to be a citizen, for example, we will read from Plato and we will um, get some arguments from Socrates himself about citizenship um, and what he thinks is um, the appropriate way to uh, be a, a participant in your society. Um, but we will also look at some others who maybe have some differences or challenge um, those ideas about citizenship and we can look at the history of citizenship, but we can also then, of course, think about what it means to have integrity. And then finally, a respectful and inclusive community. And this is a very important value for our college. Um, we certainly want everyone here to feel welcome, um, to feel that their ideas and uh, their comments in the classroom are, are, are valued and appreciated. And we want people to feel that they are very much included and in part of our wider community. And so we will be um, talking about an FYS specifically, but throughout your time here at Flagler College, you will engage in courses and activities um, that will help you to feel um, more and more a part of our larger community. And then of course the community um, of the world. So these are our core values. And I think that you'll um, find um, your FYS classes a fun and interesting place to start to learn about these things. And then I would also say about our class, this is really important. <laughs> Everyone who teaches this class volunteers to teach it. Um, we have faculty that come from nearly every department on our campus. Um, that includes all of our academic departments, as well as many of our administrative departments. And so whoever is in the room with you when you walk in on your first day of class, do know that they are there because they want to be there. They're excited to meet you. They're excited to guide you throughout um, your first semester here at Flagler College. Um, bullet point number two, I could not agree more. <laughs> These are, um, I think, um, some of the most phenomenal faculty um, and staff and others on campus. And so um, I promise you, whoever's course you end up with, you are really absolutely going to love it. So um, the last sentence of the course description that you would find in your syllabus formally um, reads like this. Um, from these individual perspectives, that is from the perspective of whatever professor is teaching the course section that you're enrolled in. All sections of FYS will engage in the college's values as they apply to the common read, critical works of history, philosophy, literature, or film, politics, the environment, or local, national, and global current events. As you acquire the key navigational skills for getting around campus, critical time management, learn how the library works, you will also be part of a deep and meaningful conversation. So this deep and meaningful conversation, which absolutely will happen across the semester, has to be, you know, about something. So these are the things we'll be talking about in first year seminar um, this coming fall. So the two required textbooks for first year seminar are The Last Days of Socrates, which may or may not be a physical book. Some professors use the physical book um, with the title The Last Days of Socrates. It's a compilation of um, different dialogues um, that Plato wrote um, around sort of the end of Socrates' life. But it may be an online PDF version, um, just depending on who you have. And then the common read, which is um, We Are the Weather by Jonathan Safran Thor. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Those are the two things every FYS section will have in common. Depending on who your professor is, there will be a myriad um, variety of other things that you may be reading, um, watching, listening to. I love a good podcast, so I will throw podcasts in there. My academic area is philosophy and religion, so I throw some extra philosophy in there. Um, we read things, you know, we read Susan Wolf on the meaning of life um, in my section. Um, and generally I provide those things um, 
online through Canvas. Um, that's typical. Some professors may have an additional required textbook, um, in which case you'll find that on the textbook list for that section through the bookstore. Um, but who knows, um, no matter what, no matter what else you're doing, you'll be talking about Socrates a bit and you'll be talking about the common read, we are the weather. I also wanna say that Flagler College, the campus, the community and St. Augustine um, are also what I would say are textbooks. Um, and we, we want you to get to know Flagler, its history, St. Augustine. Um, you know, these, this is a class where we'll bring in lots of different resources. Um, and if you know, you'll have roommates that are, have a different professor and you can talk about what you're doing in your different classes, um, but it'll, yeah, it, it'll, it'll be a little bit different in each class, but there will be some common themes. Sorry, slide. Jill, do you want me to keep going with the common reading? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So this is it, this is what it looks like. Um, you're gonna see a book that looks exactly like the picture show up on your doorstep in what, two or three weeks. That's our timeline, I think. Um, so that is on its way to you. Um, every year we introduce a common read um, to our incoming class and every incoming student receives a copy and um, reads the book over the summer. And then it functions as one of our core texts for first year seminar. So the idea is um, everyone reads this and then everyone has a kind of ongoing conversation about it that starts before you get here and then continues throughout um, your entire first semester. So there will be something, um, this is one thing that everyone can talk about, love it or hate it. <laughs> everyone's got a copy of this um, and everyone is using it. Um, everyone's doing some thinking about it. Um, so this is always something that um, you can have a conversation with um, inside the first year seminar classroom and outside, um, because if somebody is a first year student, they have a copy of this book and just like you, they were told read this and take some notes on it um, as you read it. So Jonathan Safran Foer um, was a sort of prodigy. Um, I don't know, a, a few years back, his first novel was a breakout novel. He was quite young. Um, Everything is Illuminated. It was later made into a movie, so maybe you've heard of it. Um, this is a piece of nonfiction, but it is not just a sort of long form essay, um, argumentative essay. It's um, quite different. And the topic is, as you can tell, climate change, but it's maybe a different way of talking about the topic than you might expect. It's not a long form argumentative essay for why it's real, um, aimed at a skeptical audience that's just not sure. Um, instead, it's asking a different question. So here on the slide, the main question that this um, book is actually addressing is, do those of us who accept this really believe it? <laughs> that's the main question. So um, this book is doing something a little bit different with this topic. Um, and it's doing it in a format that I think you'll find surprising. And hopefully, like I, I find it, frankly, a bit weird by the time you get to part three, he's talking to himself, you guys. So um, it's fun, um, it's informative, and it's gonna give us um, some really good um, occasion for conversation throughout your fall semester. I imagine some, a lot of conversations in the dining hall here by looking at meals. There we go. Okay. Jill, do I keep going? You can go, or Dr. Kaufman, if you want to talk about annotation, if you're. Yeah, I um, will just also kind of add a little bit about the um, first year uh, read and um, just. I, I hope that you all, you know, are excited to participate in this and um, when you get your book in the mail um, that you will definitely <laughs> dig in and as um, Jill says that we'll see you all around campus toting your books around. Um, and one of the things that we really want you to do when you get into it is to practice annotating because this is a skill that will be so essential this the, the more you um, get comfortable with and learn how to annotate, the more successful you're going to be in every single one of your classes. 
because in college, you never are going to be asked to just simply read and then summarize what you read. <laughs> that is not going to happen. Um, you are going to be held accountable for the readings in a much different way. And that is going to be um, to move beyond summary into analysis um, and also to be able to make sophisticated um, arguments about the things that you have read. And so one of the ways to get um, yourself ready for doing this kind of reading is by writing while you read. And you can do this in so many different ways. Um, the way you annotate is going to be unique to you. I, for example, write all over my books. Um, and I think, do you, you have some, some examples that are coming up or, um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, so you can see here that some of you, but what I would say is when you go to highlight something, for example, why are you highlighting it, right? Um, just if you think it's a good point and you wanna highlight it to refer back to it later, you may not remember what you were thinking at that moment. This is why we encourage you to go beyond just marking text, but to somehow then also write down what was in your mind the moment that you marked it. Um, the three of us have often talked about when we go back and reread text and we read our thoughts that we were feeling at that moment, maybe on the second or the third pass or years later, <laughs> it's not the same. Um, and so it's a really wonderful experience to go back and say, okay, my ideas and my thinking have really evolved from um, you know, the first time that I read that. And that's why it, it's important that you do some kind of writing and, and get a little bit beyond just the um, highlighting and the underlining. So, and I'm sure you two also have some, some things to say about annotating. I, I, I tend, my handwriting is, is atrocious. And um, so I sometimes will scribble in it and then I can't read it. So I more often, um, you'll pretty much always see me with a yellow legal pad. And when I'm reading, I tend to just write down notes. Sometimes if I'm, I don't have a notepad with me, I might like email myself some thoughts. Um, I also love audiobooks. And I, I think a, a great activity is to um, read a book and then listen to it or vice versa or listen to it while you're reading it um, and, and see what your reaction is to someone else reading it versus you reading it to yourself. Um, there's a great audio version of this book read by the author. Um, so I, you know, I recommend that. Exercise is different parts of your brains, different parts of your brain. I have heard, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard that you can you can improve your reading speed actually. If you're listening to the audiobook, you can you can kind of step it up to like 1.5 speed and scan along and that, that can help you. I don't I don't know. I read too fast anyway, so I haven't tried it for myself. <laughs> um the main thing here, I mean, even if nobody, even if like you guys look at like, here's my book, um, maybe nobody but, but myself can make any sense out of that, but that's okay because that's really just for me. And if I draw lines of connection that end up looking like some kind of spaghetti spider web apparatus on a couple of pages, as long as I can kind of go back and, and make sense of it, great. Um, so, and you don't have to defend that, right? If you mark a thing, like if you think that sounds important and you put a star by it, you go back to it, um, maybe the author isn't putting that forward as the key idea of that paragraph, but it struck you in a particular way and you have a kind of connection that you've made, maybe with another text, maybe with um, a personal sort of text self-connection, something like that. If it means something to you, you should mark it. Um, and then you can go back to that and you can play with it a little bit. Is this important? Does it lead anywhere interesting? Would that be a good um, supporting point for some other thesis? Or is this actually the beginning of a thesis that I could come up with um, for an essay about something with this book. Um, so it's just a matter of leaving yourself a trail of breadcrumbs um, about what your brain is doing as you're reading it and interacting with it. 
But it does mean that as you're reading it, you have to be reading it actively and you have to be doing the kind of interaction with the ideas um, that produce that impulse to record that then you can go back um, and recover and make use of um, either in class discussion, um, maybe in an argumentative essay, maybe in a liter literary essay, um, or maybe you don't consciously make use of it at all, but it kind of um, kind of just lives back here on the back burner. And then one day will kind of pop to the forefront of your mind as you're making new connections because you did read this in a way that stimulated some thoughts. Um, and those, those are useful even if they're not immediately useful. Um, so leaving yourself a trail, um, externalizing that internal process um, is such a great um, habit to get into early on in college um, because the, the, the work then of taking that internal stuff and externalizing it in a formal assignment you've given yourself a shortcut, right? Um, you've lowered the, the amount of work that you need to get to that end. Um, and that's just helpful. I've done this for so long that I find that I cannot read unless I'm holding a pen. <laughs> so you, you can get to that point. Um, it is possible. At some point in the semester, you'll be reading the book or you'll be in another class or you're reading for another class and you will find a connection between something you're doing in another class and, and this book or, or any two classes. That's that's great. And know that that is a, a great thing to bring in class. Um, you know, that's an experience that you're having that your classmates aren't. And there's so many areas it, that this book touches on, um, certainly science psychology, culture, identity, politics, um, it, it, so many things. And, and so when that happens, it, it, it is relevant. Go with it. Um, bring it up in class. Ask a question. Make a comment. Yeah, and I think one of the wonderful things about doing this in your first year seminar class is that because everyone in there will be you know, interested in different majors and different disciplines, they're going to pick things out of it that naturally appeal to them and their interests that may not have you, right? I mean, later when you're in classes where, you know, students are starting to think similarly along um, disciplinary lines, in your FYS class, you're going to get a lot of um, diversity of ideas. And, um, and that's a really, uh, you know, great uh, experience to have. One thing to also note, um, some of you may have been, you may have a method of taking notes. Some of you may have nothing. Don't rely on your memory. You may have a professor, an English professor, an FYS professor who will um, give you an assignment to take notes a certain way. The Cornell method is, is something that I know I've used in class that you may have heard of. Even if you have a method that you use, go with it. Um, it's okay if you, if it's not something that you stick with and you can still use your method but we're trying to give you some different examples of, of ways to take notes because sometimes what works for one class may not work for another. Um, and if you, if you aren't doing this in any classes, there are people who can help you find a method and experiment with them. So, Dr. Thweed, I can't remember, um, should I pull up uh, a sample from the reading on the screen for us to look at? Um, it might be helpful just to throw like our our chapters up there or I'm going to scroll down. So when we've when we've done this um, FYS session um, on campus um, in person with um, students in the room, we've actually handed out these pages um, which come from the common read. Um, you can see this is page like 22 and 23 here. And we've just had students um, take a couple minutes and read through this, this tiny little chapter um, and just take a sort of first pass, like take some notes. What, what's jumping out at you? What things are confusing? What things don't make sense? Um, what does that chapter title mean? What's with the like elaborate pun going on there? Um, and what's the sort of key idea? It's really just, you know, three pages. Um, but I think it's been a good, 
exercise um, when we've done that in the room and um, we've then had sort of short small group discussions um, that have been really um, encouraging. I don't know, I'm, I'm much more excited now about the common read now that we've been doing the FYS sessions and I've heard students talk about it and contribute their questions and observations and sort of what jumps out at them from these few pages that seems significant. Um, so that's great. Um, I might put a link to this handout in the chat that you can um, open the PDF. This is a chapter from the book that you'll get, um, but if you'd like to open it. So it may not be super easy to tell um, from the few pages that we have on the screen now, but um, this chapter is also a good example of how this book is doing something different than what you might expect um, from a nonfiction book about climate change. Um, these pages actually don't even start with climate change. Instead, he's, he's drawing a kind of argument by analogy um, to a moment um, in World War II um, in order to make a point that we live in a sort of parallel moment here where the, the question in front of us is um, what do we believe and what are we prepared to do? Um, and sort of underlining through that analogy, the sense of urgency that the author feels this moment has with regard to climate change. So one of the things I've observed in these discussions is you know, students are picking up on this, that there's a contrast between what does it mean to know something versus what does it mean to believe something? And the difference for Jonathan Safran Foer here is that belief requires action. And he thinks action is exactly what's required of us. And so he's trying to write something that will get us to believe. He doesn't want to inform us. He wants to motivate us, which means that you know, what he's doing is less like an academic argument than it is like a sermon in some sense. Don't be scared, it's not boring. I didn't mean it like, like that. Um, but the point is to sort of say to us as his readers, um, you gotta do something and you need to do something now. <laughs> and if you're not feeling that, then you're, you're getting something wrong. Um, but it's not a question of knowledge, it's a question of belief in action. Um, so it's been nice to see the students pick up on that and discuss it. Um, and to find out what it is, what sentences, what images, what um, statements pop out, um, where they are drawing their happy faces in the margin, <laughs> that sort of thing. Sorry, we, we've got a few minutes left. Um, so um, I, I, there's a few things we could do. We could, uh, if anyone has like examples they might wanna share of how you take notes, if there's something that you've found works for you, um, feel free to share that. But also, you know, in at least last few minutes, are there any questions that you all have of us about academics at Flagler, FYS, anything? Um, and again, you can, Put your question in the Q&A function if you want just us to see it. Um, you can also, uh, if you want, if you're okay with everyone seeing it, you feel free to post it in the chat. So I, I would say if, if anyone is looking for some you know, tips for success, I, I I'll throw out a few things um, that we've been talking a lot about with parents and students in the last few weeks. So sleep, I, I, I agree with my colleagues. We're gonna put that very high on the list. Um, and overall, you know, health. And then as far as success in the classroom, you're gonna have to go to class. <laughs> um, the days of not, you know, ha having to really be checked in um, and then doing the work outside of class and turning it in and doing well. Um, it, college is not going to work quite the same. 
there is a strong correlation between grades and attendance. So I, I would stress going to class. So as Jill said, said earlier, um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes are 50 minutes and your Tuesday, Thursday classes are 75. So when you're thinking about your day, if you have three Monday, Wednesday, Thursday class or Monday, Wednesday, Friday and two Tuesday, Thursday classes, you know, just know that, that those are the times you're gonna be in the classroom. Um, I would encourage you, very strongly encourage you to be checked in. <laughs> um, don't don't try to speak on your phone. We we know when you're on your phone, um, so don't do that. And then this might be just as important as sleep. You have to communicate with your professors. If you don't tell us your stresses and struggles and the material that you're just not getting, or um, when you can't come to class, right? All of these things you've got to communicate them to us. Um, the more that your faculty know what's going on, the more we can help you through these things. So I would say, take care of yourself, come to class, make a friend in every class. I think that's another really important thing. So when you do have to miss, you have somebody that you know, you can immediately contact and say, I missed class today. Can you, you know, fill me on what I need to catch up on? also communicating at the same time with your professor. Um, so those are some things I would want to throw out there for sure. This is an example of a, of a weekly plan that a, a student did in FYS. Um, it has some flaws, and, and I won't point them out. I mean, these are these are things that we used to discuss, but you can kind of see like 50 minute classes versus 75 minute classes on Tuesday, Thursday, um, if it helps to have a visual representation. I'll just throw in there, um, that there's a little bit of a, a short, simple mantra that I, I found myself falling back on in this past year teaching FYS. Um, and, it, and it goes like this, show up, turn stuff in. That's it, that's your formula for success. And I started telling my FYS students, that's your formula for success in first year seminar. But then I was like, no, that's just your formula for success. Like just that's, that's it, that's what you need to do show up, turn stuff in. Like if you want, if you want an A plus, you want a 4.0, make sure you turn good stuff in. But if you're just like getting through, just turn stuff in and don't let, don't let your anxieties about how good it is hold you back. We, we can't grade things if you don't give them to us. Like I would rather have something marginal than nothing at all. And so would you. Um, just show up and turn it in. <laughs> and it, you will look around, I think Dr. Thweet said this earlier, and you'll think everyone knows what they're doing except you. That's not true. I, I have said that I wish sometimes that students would like glow or like turn a certain color when they're lonely or, or anxious or overwhelmed or feeling like they don't know what's going on um, so that you could see that everyone is struggling. First year seminar is taught at every college most colleges because the transition to college is challenging. Our entire our jobs exist, you know, because college is challenging. And so know that you will struggle, you will struggle in different ways. Um, I have this sign on my desk that's like facing where, where students sit when they come in to meet with me. It says everything is figure outable. Um, you, you will mess up along the way. We will too. Um, and it's okay. Um, if, if that happens, no matter where you are, let us know, reach out for help, no judgment, and we can let you know what the possible solutions are. There's always a next step we can help you with. Um, so just know that we're, we're here to help you and support you. Um, I'm going to put the case email in the chat one more time. Um, so if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we're, we're around all summer. We, we love getting the chance to chat with you. Um, and you'll see us at Welcome Week in August. Uh, for those of you who are in Florida, maybe in the eye of the hurricane, I hope you're staying safe and, and um, are emerged from that without any damage. And we're really thankful to you for joining us on a summer afternoon um, when you're not in school anymore uh, to get a, an idea of what FYS is like at Flagler. Um, and thank you, Dr. Kaufman and Dr. Thweet. And you think by now I would have the technology on Zoom down after the last year, but thanks for bearing with my technical bumbles. So y'all have a great night and we'll see you in a few weeks on campus.
Bye, everyone.